Uh, today we're going to build rafters. Well, actually, more technically, they're trusses, not rafters. So we're going to build these trusses. I've already got five of them made. I'm going to have 11 total. And I've, uh, you can buy them about probably a little bit more than what you can build them yourself. And uh, that may be a smarter way because they take a while to build. But I kind of enjoy doing the work and get to build it exactly the way I want. And plus I get a video and show you. So that's what I'm doing today. And we started out by drawing a, I want to get everything perpendicular and get, I need a kind of a template to uh, build each rafter to, or not rafter, each truss to the same template. And so the first thing I had to do is I want to get a perpendicular line so I know where the center was going to be of the uh, top of the rafter truss. So the uh, what I did is I put a chalk line down through here and uh, so I have something square to work off of or something straight and then in, I measured 12 feet out from each side and because my ra my trusses are going to be 12 foot on each side or 24 foot wall side walls and they hang off a little bit off the end of that <coughs> but so I measured 12 foot on each one and then to calculate the uh, to get a perpendicular line you use some high school geometry is uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared and uh, that's a, you can kind of do that you what I did is uh, I squared the uh, 12 foot I measured up here 12 foot and squared it also then I just did the square root of to come up with the, the total I did a square root of to get the uh, final number and I could my calculator didn't have a square root function on my phone so I just asked Siri I think it was I can't remember what the number was 144 if I remember right and uh, it could be more than that. You know, I just asked Siri what's the square root of X number, and it came back with the answer. And that's what I measured up here. Or that's what that distance is here. Another way to do it, since you got two, they're all the same. This 12 foot, 12 foot, is I think it was 17 foot was the end up total. And I just took a tape from each side. I had somebody else hold them for me, and just bring them up here wherever they meet together. Then it's perpendicular also. So as long as you get them the same, they gave me my perpendicular line. So I know this is perpendicular to that line. And so then the next thing I knew, the top, I drew the rat, the uh, trusses in my 3D CAD software, had to get all my dimensions out of it. And I actually used a, found there's a website, I'll put that up on here, where you can go and <coughs> put in your truss dimensions. And it'll give you, it'll calculate and give you a CAD drawing uh, plus measurements for an engineered truss with a bunch of math calculations out of it. <coughs> and so that was real nice. I did that. He gave me the 3D CAD drawing I could put in my drawing uh, in uh, my model. And then I used that to get my dimensions, and it came up to being 4 foot 6 inches to here. So I put a mark on this perpendicular line, 4 foot 6. That's the top of my truss. It gives me a 1 to 4 uh, rise in my roof. And uh, then it's 12 feet out to that side, and 4 foot 6 here. So I'm going to show you that. We're going to lay the boards out and get the basic truss done. Then we're going to put the, the uh, braces in the middle of it. So I'll show you how to do all that. But the first thing I need to do, I need to lay out the bottom of my um, truss along that perpendicular line. I want 12 foot side walls. We are 24 foot side walls, so 12. I'm taking two 12 foot boards and, and putting them together. I need to get the angle off where the uh, the, the bottom truss uh, lays here and your top truss goes across it. That angle of that cut, you have to kind of calculate that. You have to calculate that some way. And the way I did it, <coughs> I used my handy dandy. Uh, 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 camera is a speed square. You can get these a lot of different places. Uh, this is called a Johnny square, I think, or a, I can't remember the name of the Swanson speed square is the brand is the main brand that's really the best. But I've got this one, and it gives you calculations here, and uh, it, it makes a great square and a saw guide. I think I showed you that earlier, but it also gives you it makes a really good protractor to, to work with, and it gives you the values for a typical 412 pitch roof. So if you can see right here, I'll show you this little close up later, you got, uh, these are your, I'm sorry, right here, these are your common rafter distances and there's a 412 pitch and so you're going to use that as an angle for my rafters and um, I'll show you how to do that. Here's your pivot point, we're going to use that for a 412 pitch. So first thing I got to do is I'm going to measure 12 foot because these boards are slightly longer than 12 foot, they're uh, about 12 foot and a half inch, and uh, that's where they come from the mill. And they're, they can be anywhere 12 foot to one inch or 12 foot to half inch, and so you always want to measure them and just make sure they're where you want them to be.
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my uh, speed square to, ma to mark these. And so I've, I've got my, I'm going to square it off at the 12 foot line. So I have a line all the way at the edge. All right, I marked those off squares. I'm going to cut these off at 12 foot so I have a good reference line to work from. Right now, I'm gonna take my square and uh, draw my. Let's see. Take my square here, and I'm gonna put it on the tip right here where this uh, end is. And I'm gonna bring it to a four and one, which is uh, right there. This outer marks is common. That's four. That's gonna give me a four twelve pitch on my roof, and mark that. And I'll take this. I'll do it this way, mark it the rest of the way. And that's what we're going to cut. So we're going to cut this angle right here. You can see that's where our other raft, our top of our rafter, our truss will lay right across that. So what I did after I did the first one, I made me a template. So I cut this off and made me a template that I can use over and over. And so that way I don't have to do this on every single one. So you can see here fits right on there and so I can do the same thing here just over and over on the rest of them just make me a quick template and I don't have to do all the calculations again okay, I'm gonna cut this board now I had started it earlier but I had a little screw loose on my saw that was messing me up got it fixed now got the eye protection on so we're gonna cut this angle right here All right, so that's done. Got this angle for my truss. Then I'm gonna put those down, bolt them to the ground. I mean, not to the ground, I'm gonna bolt them together on the ground. Then we're gonna put our top piece on. All right, what I'm gonna be working on now, I'm going to uh, put a plate across this, this uh, there are two uh, two by sixes, 12 foot long, got my angles cut on each end. And I've, uh, I'm gonna tie them together with this metal plate. I got it, you can get them at Home Depot or Lowe's and uh, basically to tie the two together and I put them per, put them right on my line that, I, that chalk mark I put earlier and they're right in the center where this perpendicular line comes up so I put these down here I'm using uh, one and three quarter inch uh, construction screws to put them together with and uh, a lot of different you can use nails I like screws a little better because they hold stronger and uh, I got uh, one thing I also got grab me some knee pads because crawling on this concrete kind of hurts your knees so again I want to the first thing I'm gonna do is put just two screws in here to hold it until I, then I go make sure the ends are exactly right So those two will hold it in the center but still let it a little bit of movement until I make double check both ends and make sure they're right on this line so it's an exactly straight board and then I'll come back and put the rest of my screws in. Okay what I'm going to be doing now is cutting these are my top boards that go across actually the roof is going to the top of the roof and uh, on these trusses uh, you might call them these might be the actual rafters themselves the top part of the truss <clears throat> and I'm going to where they meet in the middle there's an angle right in there I'm going to get them cut to that angle and I don't really don't care how far they hang out these are 14 footers they're going to hang out about a foot and it, an inch or two is not going to really matter that much because at the end when I get all done I'm going to cut all the ends of the boards uh, that hang over the roof off even and so I'll do that all at once <clears throat> but so I'm not really worried about exactly how long they are so if it's an inch or two difference between the boards it's not that big a concern at the moment so again what I'm getting now is this uh peak where they meet that angle there and again I use my square here my uh, speed square to uh, calculate that I want to use a one and four pitch on my roof I just stick it up here at the end of the board and read it up here at one and four and uh, just mark it off from the pivot point both of them when you get all done they'll meet right up pretty close right at the top Let's 
cut these right quick. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I've pulled, laid these boards out here. These are one of those boards I cut in the middle to meet. I've got a mark here I marked on my pavement at four foot six inches from the bottom of that one, which is the top of my rafter. And these are touching down there at that end. They're pulled together and they're meeting really, really close here. And I'm gonna use this plate. I'm gonna put the plate towards the top because I'm gonna have some more plates coming down at the bottom to tie in the braces. So I'm gonna put this kind of right towards the, the upper edge of the rafter. I'll put two in there, two screws, then get everything just right the way I want it, and then come back and then put the rest of the screws in. So we'll do that right now. I'm gonna get these where they match, right at my four foot, six inch mark. And put these in right here, try to hold all this together. You could use wood plates up here, metal plates. Uh, I kinda like the metal, they're a little cleaner. If you use a wood plate, they need to be a bigger plate to spread the load out further. The, the, and the metal plates don't have to be, they're a little stronger. They don't have to be quite so big. So I've got that, just two screws in here. I'm gonna go and put a couple screws in those ends to pull those up tight. And then I'll come back and plate this all in. Okay, so, so now what I'm gonna do, I've got this joint down here. I'm gonna pull it all together where it's right on my line down here. And I'm going to just use these long screws to pull them together. And it's just kind of a temporary to hold it until I get all plated up. But it pulls everything and holds it while I'm working on it. So I'll put a couple of these screws in here. What I'm going to do now is on my drawings, I have the, my bracing goes in here. And I've <coughs> used, my measurements are six foot to the top of this to the one W bracing. The one... Key braces go right in the middle. And there's another W that comes up over here, so that's a six foot. So I'll put a six foot there and a three foot eight inch mark back here is where they both meet. So do that right quick on both sides. I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do three foot eight here. I'm going to square these off. So those are my marks where my the W's going to come down to this point and go back up there and that'll be my brace. Okay, what I've got down, I'm building this the W frame, the, the bracing inside the truss. And uh, again, my CAD drawing, the, the website will calculate these distances and the lengths and everything for you. And you want to do that because uh, they need to be engineered to stand with uh, a snow load. And so I plugged in the expected wind load, snow loads, has to be, we'll stay at 100 mile an hour wind loads. And uh, it calculates the bracing for you and puts them in. And then I. Uh, you know, give me the dip, the length and all that stuff. The angles and stuff, I had to kind of cut them. I started out trying to use my drawing, but, you know, wood is not real precise, especially this framing lumber. It's not like you're dealing with uh, metal or with real precise uh, finishing lumber. And so you get some warping and stuff. And so uh, what I did is I made a, I put my, my uh, board up here, and I just marked on the bottom of each one. And that got my angle, and I tried to get it pretty close to my protractor on my speed square. And then I'd cut them, and uh, I made me a template. So I've got two templates, one for this brace and one for this brace. And then what I've done, and I use these over and over, but what I found out in building this is my lumber's off just a little bit sometimes. You can't get it. It'd be nice if you just cut everything at once and just bolt them all together and it'd work like we do with metal sometimes, but you can't really do that because the wood will have a little warp to it or something. And so what I've done is I use these templates is my starting point and then when I lay them out here each time I may have to cut one a little shorter a little longer to fit it's usually only like a quarter or probably like a half inch or so nothing major but you may have to cut a little bit or trim some to make them all fit so 
I keep my templates, use those over and over. I never cut those again. And then I just uh, cut me another one to the template and I'll either make it a little longer, a little shorter than the template and use these as my angles. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'll do this side, this will flip to the other side, do the same thing, and then we'll bolt them all in. Okay, so I've got these cut. My braces are all cut. They're you know, the W shape. To, and our main deal is to support that top uh, rafter up there. That's what the truss is for, is to support that. I got this top bolted in place, or, and I'm gonna I'll plate those, plate those. So first thing I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna take these and just put a screw up through this way and up through this way, the same way in those edges, to hold everything in place, and I'll come back and drop my plates. Screw the plates down, and uh, you can kind of see how to do those. I get these uh, Simpson Strong Tie plates. You can get them from a variety of manufacturers. Uh, you can also, like I said earlier, you can make a wooden plate to go on there. That's a little bit cheaper. Uh, I don't know if they're stronger or not. They're just, be the ones pretty good. But I chose to go these. These probably cost a little bit more. These are about 80 cents a piece. It takes quite a few of them on both sides to do it, but that's what I'm using right now. So we're going to start plating them all down. Okay, so I got all these plates all on this side to uh, hold those joints all together. I'm going to flip the thing over and we'll plate the other side and we'll be done with it. So they're not too awfully heavy. One person can pretty easily do these. You can see they're not as strong until you get a plate on this side. So we'll just roll this right over. And then just come out and put plates on all these joints and we'll be done with it.